And that's truly, that's, that's always my North Star, no matter what I'm doing, is I want you to feel like what it's like to feel like to be on a fence as the Taliban is shooting sniper rounds over your head or as you're in the, a Black Hawk helicopter that's, that's being shot at or as you're in a sewage ditch with thousands of people trying to flee the country. My goal is to place you in those rooms, in those places, again, to try to make you feel like, what would I do if I was in that situation? And in doing so, hoping to try to make you care just a little bit more. My name is Matthew Heineman. I'm the director of Retrograde. It is about the, the final uh, nine months of the war in Afghanistan. First seen through the eyes of the last U.S. deployment. And then when President Biden pulled out our troops um, from the war, I ended up staying with an Afghan general that they were working with. General Sami Sadat, and followed the, the the story through his eyes all the way to the final moment of uh, yeah the end of the war. A, a lot of war films, especially a lot of films in Afghanistan and war films in Afghanistan are a lot of, you know, about the, the front lines and people shooting and the danger and stuff. And, and of course, th that exists in this movie. But there's also a portrait of a, of a man who had the whole world on his shoulders that if, if he didn't hold on to Helmand province, which is where we were filming in Afghanistan, that the whole country was going to fall. And in some ways, the film is about him never really accepting the fact that this is going to happen and still having belief that maybe, just maybe, um, he could hold his country together. I think that's one of the things I most admire about General Sadat is, is he, his sort of unflagging belief um, in himself, you know, in his ability to try to um, fix the situation. I also admire him for, for allowing us to film uh, during the most difficult moment of his life as, as his country was, was falling apart around him. A mentor of mine uh, said, if, if you end up with the story you started with, then you weren't listening along the way, which I think is good advice for life um, and it's good advice for, for filmmaking. You know, don't be, don't, don't be dogmatic, be open to the story changing. That's why I love doing this. That's why I love making films is to just be, be open to the story changing. But for, you know, for me in, in the films that I make, trust is, you know, the most important thing, um, building that trust, because I really try to get into places that you don't normally get to get into. When you're dealing with life or death situations, uh, of which we filmed many, um, you know, the stakes are really, really high. And so it was terrifying. Yeah, there's no, no other way to really describe it. I, uh, that was me filming on the, on the wall with him as the sniper, um, rounds went over our heads and yeah you just sort of it's a um it's sort of hard to describe but it's it was it was uh you're not at least for me i'm not really thinking about life or death uh whether i'm going to die or whether i'm going to live i'm thinking about you know focusing i'm th thinking about framing i'm thinking about <laughs> things uh i try to like for me calming my brain is is focusing on the sort of craft of filmmaking when the, when the stakes are that high. Um, otherwise, yeah, you sort of start to freak out a bit. I'm a very emotional person. If, if I got as emotional as I normally would behind the camera, I wouldn't be able to hold the camera, you know? So the, the key is to try, try to sort of find that balance where you're between empathy and doing your job. Never in my career have I ever that those lines been more blurry than when at the end of the film, filming at the airport, um, after the Taliban took over and thousands and thousands of civilians were trying to flee the, flee the country. Um, I've cried a lot in making films um, in the edit room afterwards at night, in the morning. I've never film, cried while actually filming, like holding the camera. And it was just, it was a tragedy on a level I've never experienced in my life. And uh, yeah, I mean, my, I kept having to wipe my lens clean uh, just because it kept steaming up for my tears um it was truly yeah one of the one of the most intense uh, emotional experiences i've ever filmed
you know, you can talk about the amount of people who this is affected by, but for me, you know, ending on an image of a young woman that we, that we hold on for, I don't know, 30 to 45 seconds, um, just individualizes that experience, you know, that could be your sister or your wife or your girlfriend or your mom or, and I wanted to try to create an empathetic connection between the audience and, um, these individuals that, that I was filming with. Uh, I think to me, that's the only way to get people to care.